Good morning. Welcome to class 9 physics, ICSC physics and today we are going to study from chapter 2, motion in one dimension and the first video of that is going to comprise of the important terms. In this particular chapter, we will deal with first the scalar quantities, then the vector quantities. Now these two terms we have already seen in the earlier classes. Scalar terms are when the quantity has only the magnitude and no direction. For example, if I am going to the shop, grocer shop and buy 1 kg potatoes. 1 kg potatoes has only the magnitude. How much of the quantity? 1 kg. It doesn't need direction. So that becomes a scalar quantity, the mass of the potatoes. So scalar quantities would have uh, like mass, then we have distance, we have speed, all these quantities will be our scalar quantities. Then we come to the vector quantities. How are vector quantities different from scalar? Just like scalar, they do have magnitude, but they will have direction also. Say for example, if we are talking about force, when a force is applied on any body, that body will have to have the force applied in a particular direction. You cannot say that one Newton force but we don't know in which direction. So understand that force, acceleration, displacement, velocity, all these quantities will be vector quantities. Then we come to the third one is rest and motion. Rest and motion are the two terms which are actually in comparison to the surroundings. Say for example, uh, we are, uh, we as a group, we are going in a vehicle, then we are at rest with respect to each other. But the person who is a bystander on the road will be seeing us in motion because our vehicle is moving. So rest and motion is relative. So with respect to the surrounding when the body is not moving, then it is in a position of rest. But if it is moving with respect to the surrounding, then we say that it is in motion. Then we come to the distance. Distance is the linear distance travelled by the body, whereas displacement is the shortest distance between the two positions. Let us see the difference between distance and displacement. Let us say we have a body over here. Let us say it is an ant. It is moving from here and coming up to here. It has moved like this, so this is the distance travelled, but the displacement will be, this is the initial position and this is the final position and so between the initial position and the final position, this much will be the displacement. So now that we understood the difference between distance and displacement, let us come to speed and velocity. Now when we talk about speed, speed is distance upon time and velocity is displacement upon time. We are looking at these as the formulae when we are going to do the numericals. Your acceleration is rate of change of velocity so that becomes v minus u upon t and acceleration also is a vector quantity, velocity is a vector quantity, displacement is a vector quantity, it is denoted like so and your acceleration is denoted like so with small a. Acceleration due to gravity is when the body is falling freely. So if we have a body which is falling freely on the ground, its velocity is going to increase per second. By how much velocity it is increasing per second, that becomes the acceleration. Let us say freely falling body, it is 0 meter per second is the velocity, initial velocity. Let us say after 1 second, it has become 10 meter per second. Then it has increased again by another second to 20 meter per second, then you will see that the difference in velocity is 
10 meter per second and that becomes the acceleration. 10 meter per second per second is the acceleration. So that becomes your acceleration due to gravity. We take it as 9.8 meter per second square and sometimes we round it off to 10 meter per second square. Now let us come to a few numericals which are based on this. So the first one will be when we talk about the conversion of velocities because in our numericals sometimes we will be given the velocities in kilometers per hour. I'll simply say kmph but our SR unit of velocity is meter per second. So in our first answer when we talk about 54 kmph what does that mean? It is 54 kilometers per hour that means upon one hour. So one kilometer is 1000 meter so 54 kilometers will become 54 into 1000 meter and what is one hour? It is 60 minutes multiplied by 60 seconds. So if you cancel these zeros, you will see that 2 goes 5 times and 2 goes 3 times. That gives you 54 multiplied by 5 upon 18 meter per second. 18 ones and 18 threes, 54. So that will give you 15 meter per second. And that is our answer 1. Let us come to the second part. In our second part, we have to convert 20 meter per second into kilometers per hour. So 20 meters is going to be 20 upon 1000 kilometers and then it is upon 1 second. That 1 second will be now 1 second will be divided by 60 into 60 because it is 3600 part of an hour. So we are converting that 1 second into hour. So this is how we get kilometers per hour. Now instead of writing this we can simply write We can, this is meter per second, this kilometers per hour. And here 20 multiplied by 3 sixes 18 upon 5. So if you multiply by 18 by 5, we will have 72 kilometers per hour. And that is how we converted 20 meter per second into kilometers per hour and that is our answer. Now we come to the second question. The question says a vehicle travels 20 kilometers with a uniform speed of 40 kilometers per hour and in the next 30 kilometers with a uniform speed of 20 kilometers per hour. Find the total time of the journey. So the total time of the journey will be the first part of 20 kilometers which is with one speed and next 30 kilometers is with another speed. So we will write the, the first distance that is 20 kilometers and the speed the first one is 40 kilometers per hour. So we will find T1. We have the relation speed equal to distance upon time. So we will use this and we will say therefore speed 1 is equal to distance 1 upon time T1. 
Therefore, you will have T1 equal to, if you take T1 this side, speed will go in the denominator. That will become D1 upon speed 1. Distance, the first distance is 20 kilometers. And the first speed is 40 kmph. And so, kilometers, kilometers also will go and you will have half an hour because this per hour comes in the numerator it becomes an hour now let us take case 2 so we will say also t2 will be equal to d2 upon speed 2 let us mention it over here what is our d2 the next distance is 30 kilometers and the next speed is 20 kmph. Now let us substitute over here and we will get D2 equal to 30 km upon 20 kmph. So kilometers, kilometers get cancelled and here this will be one and a half hour. That is your T2. Therefore we will say the total time is equal to T1 plus T2 which is half plus one and a half which is two hours and that is our answer one. Let us come to the let us come to the second part. In our second part we have to find the average speed. For our average speed formula is now the speed is distance upon time but average speed will be total distance upon total time. So we got to remember it that way it will be total distance upon total time. So total distance is your D1 that is 20 kilometers and D2 which is 30 kilometers. So we should substitute this 20 plus 30 and the total time we just got this here over here this is the 2 hours that gives you twenty five kilometers per hour and that is our answer two. Now these were the simple videos. Now in the next video we will make them a little more difficult or application type. Thank you for watching.